Welcome back to Reading with Miss Michelle. Today we're going to read Friendship According to Humphrey, Chapter 5. If you have a copy, go get it so you can read along with me. Don't forget to help us out by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with all of your friends. Chapter 5, Rhyme Time. I felt pretty proud of myself after the bus ride. Once I was back in room 26, I looked over at my pop-eyed neighbor. Morning, Og, I squeaked to him, hoping that after the long, lonely weekend, he might be in a friendlier frame of mind. He responded to my greeting with dead silence and a grim grin. Or maybe he couldn't see me because there was a huge piece of paper taped to the front of his glass box. And something about that note must have been pretty funny because all of my classmates were laughing hard. All right, what's so funny? asked Mrs. Brisbane. Ugh, said Gail. She was giggling so hard I was afraid she'd get the hiccups again. Mrs. Brisbane ripped the paper off the cage and read it. Help, I'm a prince who's been turned into a frog. Kiss me quick. Somebody made loud smacking sounds, which made everyone laugh even louder. Mrs. Brisbane looked up from the paper. I heard that, Kirk. Are you volunteering to kiss Og? It was a pretty disgusting thought to me, but everyone else laughed. I think it has to be a girl, said Kirk. Mrs. Brisbane folded up the paper. Thank you for our joke of the day. You can stop giggling, Gail. Now, let's all calm down and get to work. I'm anxious to hear the poems you've written, but let's get our spelling quiz out of the way first. Please take out a pencil and a piece of paper. Whoops! I'd done a lot of thinking over the weekend. Something I hadn't thought about was our spelling quiz. Mrs. Brisbane and my classmates don't know that I usually slip into my sleeping house with my notebook and pencil and take the quizzes too. I still hadn't gotten 100% like Saya. I hoped I would someday. This would not be the day. I did all right with practice, jewel, and pound, but accommodate? Did Mrs. Brisbane really think anyone except Saya would get that right? It looks like they threw in some extra letters left over from another word. Next, it was time for poems. Kirk, you seem to want to be the center of attention this morning. You can go first. Kirk jumped up and said, I've got to write mine on the board. Mrs. Brisbane told him to go ahead. When he was finished, he read it aloud. It's called Frog. Here goes. Funny Ribbits. Oily, green, that's a frog. Take away the funny ribbits, you've got og. Mrs. Brisbane smiled and nodded her head. Well done, Kirk. Very clever. What do you think, class? Does that say oily? Asked repeat it, please, Richie. Frogs aren't oily. Kirk wrinkled his nose. Well, he looks oily even if he isn't. Besides, I needed an O word to spell frog. Mrs. Brisbane asked the class to help Kirk out with another O word. I decided to squeak up. Obnoxious, offensive, I yelled. I almost said unfriendly, but it doesn't begin with an O. No one seemed to hear me. Sometimes I wish I had a big booming voice like AJ's. Honest? asked Seth, jumping up out of his seat. Sit still, Seth. That's a good guess, but honest starts with a silent H. Mrs. Brisbane wrote the word on the board. Silent H. No fair. I'll have to watch out for that one. How about odd? suggested Art. What do you think, class? Do some people think frogs are odd? Some students nodded their heads. Nobody nodded harder than me. What do you think? The teacher asked Kirk. Maybe oddball fits him better, Kirk said, smiling. Everybody seemed to like the answer, and I was not about to disagree. 
I glanced over at Og to see what he thought. Boing! He twanged. Everybody laughed, even Mrs. Brisbane. Oh, Og, you are so funny, she said. Oddball, yes. Funny, no. In my humble opinion. Heidi waved her hand in the air. Og doesn't say ribbit. He says boing. R is for boing. Heidi, that makes roing. Kirk looked very pleased with himself. Heidi frowned. That's not what I meant. That's enough on that one, Kirk. Why don't you work on it a little more, said Mrs. Brisbane. She called for another volunteer. This time, Heidi actually remembered to raise her hand. When the teacher called on her, she stood up and read her poem. I met a little frog and said, how do you do? My name is Hopper. Is that your name too? He croaked. My name is Leaper. That's what I do all day. But when I tried to pick him up, Leaper ran away. Nicely done, Heidi, said Mrs. Brisbane. Good rhyming. It's a funny idea to use your own name. Anyone else? No hands were raised this time. How about you, Tabitha? asked the teacher. What did you write? Tabitha looked scared, scared, scared. Mrs. Brisbane put on her friendliest smile. Don't be afraid. We won't bite, will we, class? Most of the kids smiled and shook their heads. Kirk growled like a lion, just to be funny, but I couldn't tell if Tabitha noticed. Slowly, she stood up and picked up her paper. In a soft voice, she read her poem like it was one sentence, really fast like this. People think bears are mean, but they've never seen Smiley. He doesn't growl or make you sad. He wouldn't ever be bad, Smiley. I don't care what people say. He helps me get through the day, Smiley. Tabitha quickly sat down and stared at her table. Thank you, Tabitha. That's a lovely poem about a bear, and I like the rhymes, said Mrs. Brisbane. I saw Tabitha reach into her pocket and pat her stuffed bear. I also saw Mandy look over at Heidi and roll her eyes. I could even read her lips, and she mouthed the word baby. Any volunteers? asked the teacher. Garth? Garth stood up to read his poem. Roses are red, frogs are cool. Now we've got one here at our school. He folded up his paper. That's it. Mrs. Brisbane reminded him that the poems were supposed to have six lines and Garth's poem had four. Personally, I was in shock. Frogs are cool? What kind of a poem is that? After I helped him and AJ with Mean Bean, Garth wrote Frogs Are Cool? We didn't have time for any more poems because the recess bell rang and my classmates raced to get their coats and gloves. Tabitha took her time, waiting to see that no one was watching and secretly stashed her bear in her pocket. Saya stayed behind too and approached her. I liked your poem. Is Smiley your bear's name? She asked. Tabitha nodded, but she didn't say anything. She didn't know how shy Saya was or how hard it was for her to come up and talk like that, but I knew. He's nice, said Saya. Are you coming out to recess? Tabitha nodded again. Saya waited, but when Tabitha didn't budge, she said, See you outside, and hurried to the cloakroom with her head down, looking embarrassed. I've got to admit, Speak Up, Saya, is a favorite friend of mine. To see Tabitha treat her that way made me mad, mad, mad. She was about as friendly as a frog. The new girl waited until everyone else had left the room before rising to get her coat. Later, after the students left for the day, Miss Loomis came into room 26 and bundled up in her coat, hat, and gloves. Hi, Sue. I'm ready when you are. She walked over to Og's cage. How's your star pupil doing? Fine. He and Humphrey seem to get along all right. At least they don't disturb each other, said Mrs. Brisbane. Don't disturb each other. I was pretty disturbed when Og leaped at me. 
Mrs. Brisbane put on her coat. Let's stop for coffee to warm us up on the way home. Sounds great, Miss Loomis answered. I can't thank you enough for giving me a ride. What are friends for? asked Mrs. Brisbane. After they left, I felt as gloomy as the sky looked. Spinning my wheel warmed my fur up, but it didn't make me feel any warmer inside. What are friends for? For fun and talking and helping and sharing, right? Hey, Og, I called out, peering through the bars of my cage at his glass house. I hope you've been paying attention here in room 26. I waited a few seconds to allow him to answer, which he didn't, of course. I hope you've seen what good friends the kids are. I mean, like Garth and AJ, the way they stick together, and Heidi and Gail, the way they like to giggle. Saya and Miranda are pals. Art and Richie, too. Wouldn't it be nice to have fun friends like them? I didn't actually expect an answer, of course, but this time I did get something. Splashing. Splish, splash, splish. At least I knew Og was alive. Maybe he was even listening. I kept going. Even if we can't actually talk to each other, we could, I don't know, have jumping contests? Suddenly, I had all kinds of ideas. We could sing together or make funny faces at each other. Maybe you could teach me how to go boing. Boing. I almost fainted. Was he answering me? Boing. I said, though, I didn't sound much like a frog. Boing to you, Og. Boing, boing, said Og. Yeah, boing, I replied. My heart was thumping quite loudly. We were actually having a conversation. Uh, so what else is new? I continued. I waited, but there was no answer. Og, I called out. Og, answer me. Silence. This was one frustrating frog. I tried again, but there were no more boings, not even a splash. The room was silent as a tomb. That's about as quiet as it can get. Somehow it felt even worse to think that Og tried to talk to me and gave up. Still, Saya had learned a brand new language when she came to this country. Maybe Og and I could learn to understand each other. I returned to my wheel and started spinning as fast as I could. I spun until it was almost dark. At last, the door swung open and the lights came on. I have arrived, Aldo announced, waving his broom. No applause, please. Hello, 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 I shouted. I was never so glad to see anybody in my life. Aldo hurried toward my cage, rubbing his arms. Hey, it's cold in here. They turn the heat down at night to save money, but it's freezing outside, and it's almost freezing in here, said Aldo. He turned to Og's cage. Hey, Og, how's the world treating you? When Og didn't answer him, Aldo turned back to me. He's the strong silent type, I guess. Say, Humph, old pal, I've been thinking about that idea of getting a better job, you know. Maria thinks I should go back to school. I tried to imagine Aldo sitting in a little table all day with Miranda, Richie, and Seth. I didn't think his legs would fit. I could go to college during the day and still work here at night. College? I hope they had bigger chairs there. Aldo pulled up a chair so we were practically whisker to whisker. See, I went to college for a year. When my dad died, I quit because I needed to make money. I thought I'd go back, but I never did. It's never too late, I squeaked. Aldo shook his head. I'm not a kid anymore, he reached in his pocket. Maria got me this application for City College, but I don't know. City College? That's where Natalie the babysitter went. She said that's where people go to become doctors and lawyers and teachers. That's where people go to study things like psychology and get good jobs. 
go, 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 I said, hopping up and down. Maria thinks I'm smart enough, said Aldo. I just don't know if I can handle all that studying. He sighed and rose from his chair. Guess I'd better get this room cleaned or I won't have a job at all. Aldo tucked the application back in his pocket. First, I'm going to turn up the heat. Good old Aldo. He was a thoughtful guy and a smart guy too. I hoped his wife could talk him into going back to school. I wasn't sure if I could do it all by myself, and I was pretty sure Og wouldn't be any help at all. One of the most beautiful qualities of true friendship is to understand and to be understood. Seneca, Roman Playwright. The end. Thanks for joining me for Chapter 5. Please check back for Chapter 6. Don't forget to help us out by liking, subscribing, and sharing this video with all of your friends. I hope you join me next time. Bye!